Welcome to the Jatai Academy. Today we're going to be doing a one length bob that's inspired by Selena Gomez. Now Selena Gomez has a lot of hair. So in order to create this nice sleek one length bob, we're going to have to introduce some texturizing. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. That thins the hair, keeps it sleek and smooth without introducing any kind of movement. So let's get started. I always like to start with a little bit of Jatai Blade Glide. It makes the hair easier to comb, it puts a slight conditioning effect to it, constricts the cuticle, and gives me a cleaner cut. Now we're going to start here with a natural or center part right down the middle, and I'll brush everything back and push forward and see where it wants to split. I'll take that all the way down to the center of the nape, and then from there I'll take the uh, occipital bone over to the mastoid. That gives me a flat section in the back. Using my Osaka scissors from Jatai, that's the blade that has the nicest point, so it makes it easiest for me to go through and point cut. The more pointy your scissor is, the easier you'll get a point cut, and it'll be cleaner and you can go deeper onto it. So we're gonna take a center section, we're gonna comb this straight down the middle. Now I'm gonna put clips on the hair on either side just to get the hair out of the way. It wants to keep falling in my hands. So now I'll comb everything down straight from the part, straight down, make sure my fingers are not flipping, and then I'll go through and do a deep point cut. Because the whole idea behind this bob shape is to prevent the hair from bulking up and building a bell type of shape. I don't want this to stack and have all this fullness. I want a sleek kind of shape. So going through and doing a deep, deliberate point cut like this will enable the hair to collapse a little bit, but still retain the bob type of shape. So I'll go through point cut center towards the front. So in the middle, I'll point cut that, doesn't matter. But on each side, I'm always point cutting from the center towards the front. So that way, the movement is going to be the same with each of my point cuts on both sides of the head. If I always point cut from left to right, then the left side of the head is always going to move to the right. Taking my next section, which is going to be parallel to my previous section, and then taking my center section where I started, and using my guide from underneath to cut the one length exactly like I was doing before. Now, when I comb everything down, since I've been point cutting, the line of my guide is not going to be real prevalent. I'm gonna see kind of a ghosting of the image of the, of the previously cut guide, and I wanna use that to mimic what I'm point cutting on top of it. Now here again, point cutting from the center of the head towards the front, and I'm not being real persnickety and diligent about making sure I'm directly on top of the guide. The more variance that I have in my line that I'm cutting, the more sleek the shape can be, the less stacking effect that I'm gonna get. Be sure to click the thumbs up, click subscribe, and the notification bell to be notified of future Jatai Academy content. Now I'm just gonna continue on with my section from the center working towards the front, making sure that looks good. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now I always am cutting parallel to my parting, and I will continue to comb that clean from the parting all the way down until I get everything nice and smooth. And, and something else that I want to expand on here is that my partings are just as much of a part of my guide as the actual previously cut guide is. So every parting that I take, my fingers are gonna be parallel to the parting. So the line that I'm cutting is actually the line that the parting is. So if the parting is at an angle, my fingers are at an angle, the line I cut is at an angle. So that way, as long as I know that my parting is the same on both sides and I have everything nice and balanced, it makes it a lot easier for me to make sure that the sides are even. Now here, when I start to move up to the top of the head, I'm not taking my quarter part. I'm gonna take that part all the way around from the back into the front and to the side. I wanna make sure that that's parallel to my previously cut section and the same on both sides. Now I'm gonna comb everything clean and I'll keep combing until I get 
everything perfectly smooth and clean and then go through and clean up my line just like I was doing in my previously cut sections. I want to make sure that I'm keeping the same depth of my point cut as I go through. Now, if I need to clean a little bit up, I'm cleaning a little bit up, but I'm not worried about everything being perfectly pristine. I want some variation and some softness in the line. So now we're working from the back into the front and continuing to work from the center towards the front with my point cutting. Here, the last section, combing everything down as evenly as I can around the parting and around the, uh, the natural center part and the crown. And just anything that hangs over, we're going to cut off. Be sure to follow us on your favorite social media at Jatai Feather. Now, after we've gone through and we've done our base cut, we're going to go through and blow everything dry, get everything up off the scalp as we dry it, and then I'm going to go through and flat iron it. Now, when I flat iron, I'm going to flat iron in exactly the same way that I cut it. So horizontal sections, I'll lift the iron up on the bottom as the hair, as the iron touches the hair, and then close the top down and pull with my left hand to make sure everything is fed into the iron nice and smooth. Now we're gonna take a vertical section in the center of the back, and I'm gonna hold this out vertically. So section that hair out of the way, get it out of the way, I'm gonna hold this out vertically, and going through and using my Jatai Tokyo Thinning Scissors, I'm gonna go through and about two to three inches in, just go through and point cut some of that internal weight out. I don't usually go deeper than about halfway, and here I'm keeping it about a third of the length out. So just going through, removing some of the weight from the ends. I'm not trying to remove so much internal weight as much as I'm trying to remove the weight from the ends. Now here in the back of the head, you can remove a lot more weight without any kind of fear of any alfalfa sprouts sticking up or anything kind of getting out of control because that hair will always hang straight down. As I move up the head, I take the next section, this is more or less the parietal ridge, I'm gonna hold that out at the exact same you know, elevation and then go through and point cut that through. Now, as I start to point cut this through, I'm taking it a little deeper at the bottom of the parting, and then as I get to the top of the section, I take it more towards the tip, so I'm thinning more underneath and less on top. And here you'll see I'll start deeper and then just go towards the tip on the very top, because I, I don't want a lot of texturizing on the top surface layer of the hair. I want this texturizing underneath to remove weight so that I can still keep a, a nice, smooth, slick shape without all that bulkiness of someone that has a lot of hair and it getting very broomy. Here on the last section, I finish everything up. On the last section, I'm gonna comb everything down. I tend to not do a whole lot of texturizing on the top layer, just make sure everything blends there. I wanna keep that top surface layer very, very smooth and very, very glassy. Here's our end result. I think we got a really nice, sleek, smooth, head curving kind of style. For someone that has a lot of hair, that's the way I would go through and texturize it and remove weight without introducing any kind of movement to it. Please check out the Jatai Academy. There's all kinds of great information on there that will make you a better hairstylist or barber. Let us know what you'd like to see in the future, and we will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.